Uh, my name is Dr. Scott Nall. Uh, I have a uh, practice doing uh, orthopedic medicine, integrated pain management here in Fishers, Indiana. Uh, in osteopathic medicine, we learn a musculoskeletal screen where we're looking at uh, lack of range of motion, uh, symmetry between the two sides of the body, tissue texture changes, for instance, uh, compared to one area to the other. And looking at that, you're able to diagnose uh, problems and restriction of range of motion. Using just uh, hands-on diagnosis does tend to kind of uh, limit you in a certain degree because you really can't look in there and see what's going on. And in most office settings, uh, you're limited to either uh, sending someone out for an x-ray, which just shows bony pathology. Most pain uh, and musculoskeletal complaints tends to be more soft tissue related in the muscle, the tendon, or the ligaments. Uh, so then you're going to have to send the patient to get an MRI, which is very expensive. It's very uh, time consuming for both the patient and the office because with insurance reasons, you're having to call, pre-certify these things, uh, get them set up, and then hope the patient actually shows up to the appointment on time and gets it done. With ultrasound, the patient comes in, they say, hey, I have this problem. You scan the joint, you scan the tissues around it, see what's going on. You say, yes, I've identified a problem here. You can treat it right now. Or you can say, no, I don't see it. I think you might need additional imaging. And then you've already kind of cut out that the, those first few visits already because you've eliminated so much. And if you actually do find a problem, you can treat it right there on the same day, which is uh, very nice and convenient for the patient. Um, and you're able to see more patients that way. A lot of people worry about the learning curve um, with it. They think it takes a long time to learn. Uh, with the newer machines, I mean, the image quality is so good uh, that it's fairly, I, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's a, it's a lot easier than you would think uh, to pick up on these techniques. And I mean, think about it, we're physicians, we've been through school, I mean, four years of undergrad, four years of medical school, at least three years of residency. So nothing about medicine is really easy. So to think that, oh, this is a huge learning curve. I mean, if you're a physician, you've made it through this, you should be able to pick this up uh, without a whole lot of training. But there is plenty of training available um, out there uh, at very reasonable costs. A lot of it is just, number one, learning the, the position, where to put the probe, because there's certain protocols you need to be able to uh, go through. Uh, so learning what normal looks like and how to get that good normal image, um, how to fine tune the machine uh, to get that kind of image that you like. And that's something that's really great about the, the, a lot of the newer machines, um, that they're set up to where you don't have to do a lot of tweaking uh, to begin with. Uh, once you get more advanced, then you can start kind of playing with the, with the settings a little more uh, to kind of fine tune the image to what you like to see. A lot of times that I've found, and this has actually been shown in research, that uh, most uh, family doctors, and, and I would agree with this even in my family uh, physician training, have pretty poor uh, orthopedic exam skills. They're not trained in it very well. And so when patients come in with pain, uh, a lot of times uh, the, the doctor really doesn't know probably what to do. Um, and so what usually gets done is either a pain medicine is prescribed, uh, then the pa which really doesn't treat the problem. Uh, it kind of covers up the pain. If the, if, if the injury is uh, kind of mild, the patient will probably heal on their own, and that's what the doctor's hoping, that they'll heal on their own, and then they'll see them back in a month and everything will be okay, and they can stop the pain medicine. Uh, number two, if it's bad enough, they can send them to physical therapy. Um, <clears throat> when they get to physical therapy, the physical therapist will evaluate them and give them some type of rehabilitation program. So if the patient has a, a soft tissue injury like a tendon, uh, partial tendon tear or ligament laxity, uh, that's not being addressed. And since those really can't be rehabilitated through physical therapy, physical therapy tends to work more on muscle structures, um, the patient will fail. And then if that doesn't work, then they get referred to orthopedic surgery. And orthopedics will usually do either a blind injection of cortical steroids into a region and do some x-rays and look at it. And if it's not a, a surgical case, which a lot of times it's not, I'd say more than likely it's not, um, then the patient's left without a whole lot of recourse. So they go back to their family doctor and then what do they do? They really don't know. And so a lot of times they end up on chronic pain meds. And so that's where I fit in. I'm kind of in between the two because I address a lot of these soft tissue injuries and soft tissue injuries are best utilized, or best viewed, I guess you could say, uh, using ultrasound because uh, the, the image quality is just great. You can see it, and uh, we're able to address the actual problem. And then if it's a tendon or ligament issue, we're able to strengthen those up or get the inflammation calmed down enough to then the patient can go to physical therapy and rehabilitate in an appropriate fashion and get a good, good outcome with that.